The, these are heavenly spiritual beings. That's how evil they are. At some point, somehow they weren't that. Like, how could you have known God, been right. that close to God in in the heavenly court, and then this is and now you're causing unbelievable amounts of suffering and pain. Right? De the devil's all he's all out. You know, Lucifer, um, he's out to. Um, kill steal and destroy like that's his whole mm -hmm. thing and he was at the right hand of god so you're like right that's just i just find it really fascinating that these are obviously um intelligent you know they're in they're not like stupid they're intelligent so they're not and yet this is how fallen they are and you know i just i yes. just that's bizarre to me how yes. you could be yeah. next to god and then turn into something so evil that's that's weird <laughs> yeah yeah no uh i mean it's it's it, you're, you're prying open you know large territory of course in terms <laughs> of how much we can possibly cover in a couple minutes but anyway we can come back to this for sure because it intersects at so many points um throughout the bible and uh also in a assumptions book yeah it's and, in here a lot it needs to right um, yeah. but i think you're right in what you said that you know, they have kind of rebelled and they, they have a chosen identity already and a, a chosen and what's the word, um, locked in, uh, destiny. Jesus said that, you know, that the fires of Gehenna of hell are reserved for the devil and his angels. So it seems like Jesus confirms that, you know, they, they are past any state of grace Right. Unlike humanity, mm. Mm. we are we, we have as long as it's called today, the author of Hebrews said, you know, do not yeah. harden your heart, uh, which doesn't mean don't harden your emotions. Don't harden your will. Right. The vehicle of, you know, response, uh, the thing that's driving you, don't harden it, but be pliable. Don't be a stiff neck. Submit. Um you, you know, because it's still called today, there's grace, you know, you just, there's... I think you just answered the question, actually, I know it sounds, but for me, what it means is, like you said, they're beyond, God has withdrawn any hope of grace for them. Part of our, our willingness, even our, maybe, maybe part of our, even our willingness um, to seek for forgiveness or that spirit of repentance. And I think this is biblical. I don't know if it's Ephesians or whatnot. It is the grace of God that inclines our hearts yes. to, seek, to seek his grace. Yes. And so yeah, if yeah. God were to fully remove that grace from you, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't want it. <laughs> you wouldn't want, God, right? And so it's kind of an interesting, uh, and to your point, being human, being human and not these fallen angels that we're in a different, we're in a different state in a different sort of, we're on different ground than they are, you know, in terms of our destiny is yes. not really known um, in terms well, of let me uh, just, while we're um, alive. Me, th there's a couple different views on this. And, and I, I think this is true. And we do get into this when we talk about the heavenly court uh, and the earthly court, as it were, the polis for, for mankind. And there does seem to be this, this parallel going on. You have mm -hmm. the, the heavenly invisible world, and then you got the earthly world. We are his image bearers, gods. So that means we are the visible representation among many other things, but mm -hmm. we're the point where heaven and earth convene. Mm. And we're supposed to bring God's, you know, royal good rule to the earth. Um, and it seems like what you have going on at the trees when God gives the commands is it's a probation period. There's a testing. And it seems that with the whole structure of Genesis 1 and 2, and then what we learned building from that in the Bible, that coming through the test would have ushered in a period of time where there wouldn't be probation anymore. You had passed the test. You had shown your loyalty to God. You had, as it were, crushed the serpent's head when he came into the garden, right? Because God, Yahweh Elohim, told the man, guard the garden. The Hebrew word is, is that why it's called a garden? Cause you're supposed to guard it <laughs> that that's deep man like I mean, that's that's I english which garden i don't even know is garden a, a french word originally i don't even know <laughs> um 
It can mean Sorry. keep. Yeah. It can mean keep. It can mean watch over. Yeah. Yep. But guard. Yeah. And so Adam didn't guard. Um, and he kind of allowed, he, he shirked his responsibility when, when the serpent came in there. Um, and so there was a <laughs> testing period. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's a really fascinating dynamic because angels are not I, you know it's interesting it, probably in many degrees I say this carefully they are they have attributes of God's nature but they're not in the image of God exactly like we are. Yep. I mean so even in scripture angels can be called sons of God and because there is this like image relatedness to God but man, God chose yes. to be his full image. And so, so David in Psalm 8 will be astounding. Like, Lord, how, what, what is man that you're mindful of us? You know, the son of man that you care for us. And, that, and then you put all this under our charge. And, you know, this is a larger story. We can't get in, into this. But I think that is the occasion by which uh, Satan, who had come to be known as Satan, rebelled against God because he was of the heavenly realm, spiritual like God. And now he's being asked to serve mm -hmm. these lowly creatures on the earth. And he doesn't, he's limited in his knowledge. He doesn't know God's divine counsel, <laughs> the, the eternal covenant that the new Testament will talk about. Ah, you know what? That's an, that's a very interesting point is that, um, and even we didn't know until it all unfolded. So right. all he know, yeah, that's that is an interesting point. He did not know what the plan was, except that it was for humanity's life, for life and flourishing for humanity. Yeah. Um, and so that's why he was so set out to destroy it, so that it wouldn't succeed. Right. And well, so, and especially and I, if you think if you think you're a co regent with God. Uh, you know, in the rest of creation is there to serve you because yes. at a, at a superficial level, that certainly looks to be the case in Genesis one, right? There's a, a, you go from lower forms of life up then to animals, to man, and then God, right? Angels aren't mentioned there, except I would argue that Genesis one twenty six to 28, when God says, let us make man in our image, that's actually language showing the the heavenly court the where he's talking to his angels there. exactly there yeah in in psalm 8 tells us um you know when david says what is man that you're mindful of him you made him a little lower now the masoretic text has elohim you made him a little lower than god but the septuagint has angels and the author of hebrews in hebrews 2 quotes the septuagint saying that you know, Christ was, you know, for a time lower than angels, but then, you know, quoting Psalm 8. And so I, I think the, the original was something that included angels at the bare minimum. And the idea is that man is below angels. This was the, well, let's just say it's the, it's the surface level creation. Yet that wasn't the complete plan. This is true at that level, but God had destined that man would learn serving and then by serving would become like God and rule over it all. Why? Because that's who God is. Jesus said, I'm lowly of heart. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and, and to bring it, you know, to give my life as a ransom. So to bring it all first, like full circle, you know, given it shall be given, like that is who God is. Is. Well, well, look, I mean, now we're getting, we're getting really deep and really heady <laughs> on this and I like it. <laughs> It's it's kind of crazy because you think about it, you know. And I think we talked about this before, Stuart. Um, Jesus was not always in human form. I mean, there was a pre-incarnate Jesus where you know right. he was with God in the heavens. Now, obviously, there's obviously indications in the Old Testament where God comes to Earth in some sort of a bodily represent a representation. messenger. Yep. Form, yeah, but he's yeah. not. He's not actually man. As far as we, as you know, he, whereas when he's born of woman of Mary, he's actually a man. Now yes. God is in human human flesh. Yes, 
Yes. And he lives this life and, and then he dies and he's resurrected and he's, he's living forever now in a human body. Jesus is living forever yes. Yes. in a human body. So his plan yes. was always to be human. And part of that humanity was serving in a broken world. Now yes. there'll be skeptics who say, well, why did God do all this in the first, you know, what, whatever. There's all these interesting things, tangents we could go down. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, God, we have the, since we're living in that same world, we have the opportunity to follow him in his footsteps and to be like God. And in fact, for mm -hmm. those who do and have, have faith in him and, and pray for the grace for God to transform me, to be more like him, we will, like you said, be his brothers. Like we will be sons of God. Right. And so there's that sharing of actual almost in right. It's almost like there's a sharing of divinity yes. that we can, you know, this, it almost sounds Eastern religion or something like that when you talk about it. Cause it's like kind of, it's like Nirvana, but it's not, it's like a personal, oh. no, I'm just saying it's but not it's, that, but it's like, it's kind of crazy. These um, it's not that at all, <laughs> but how we can, we're going to share in, in Jesus's, um, almost his divinity and godship because of what he's done for us and how he's transforming well, us. It's funny that you, you said Eastern, but you actually were closer to the mark than you realized. Mm -hmm. And that is um, in the Eastern Orthodox church, they have something called theosis. And that is like this union with Christ or union with God to where, I mean, if you look at, you know, some of the language in revelation, you know, they're, there will not be like a temple, you know, for the, for the bride and, you know, or, or the lamb, you know, is the temple. And like, we are the city of God. And it's this like picture of one is we are not the creator, of course. Um, but there's this such close association that at times it's almost as if the language from that angle of language is blurred. It's not the whole picture. Um, but it is, I, I tell you, like, I, I, on one level, like why a good angel, like who wasn't created evil, um, you know, maybe that's another another conversation. That's one we can't understand. Yeah. Um, why the thought would ever enter to rebel or to think that you would be successful or to think that that's a good thing or that it'd be worth it? Um, you know, I used like that. That's a huge mystery. But the greatest mystery is, as you said, this God his whole plan was to become a human and you made that point so well forever. And it's not just forever. Where is he right now? He is in heaven. And so that means he's at the right hand of God as a human being in human form with a body, a resurrected body, which is a first fruit for all those, you know, who believe in him will, will have a resurrected body as well. I mean, that just blows your mind, right? Like, you know, we started off there in Genesis. He makes man from the earth, a human body. And the goal was to get that body to the heavenly realm, right? And that's not even completely accurate. That's like the middle station because right. Jesus is coming back to the to earth. earth. Earth is the to earth is the final destination for sure. Heaven yeah. and earth. Yeah, together. <laughs> right. 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 To, to bring it all together. And so, I mean, the victory has been won. And I mean, I think... As Christians, this is not a, a might makes right victory. It's a victory of love, but we need to embrace that. And we have to not be ashamed of saying the victory has won. It has been won. The hard work has been done. And, and we need to have our eyes fixed on Jesus and, and living that out and encouraging one another. Uh, because that's what the world needs right now. Right. You know?